بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محب اللہ وزیر اینڈ دا ٹاپک از دی مائٹرل ویل اینڈ آرٹک ویل لک دا اوپننگ آف دا اوپننگ فرام دی لیفٹ ایٹریم ان ٹو دا لیفٹ فرنٹیکل اٹ از بینگ گوڈیڈ بائی دس آرفس وچ از کالڈ ایس دی بائی کسپڈ ویل اور مائٹرل ویل اور لیفٹ at your ventricular orifice and what happens that first of all a fibrous ring ring made up of fibrous tissue it is being fitted a fibrous ring is being fitted over here into this atrioventricular orifice like the lentil of a door and then to this fibrous ring then the septa are being fixed like that one septum anteriorly and one septum posteriorly we call it as the upper anterior cusp and this posterior cusp like the flaps of the door look you can see it over here look first of all the fibrous ring is being fixed into this orifice and then to this this cusp you can see this one cusp and another one posterior to that look this is actually we have removed the posterior wall and we are looking at it from the posterior side that's why you can see this is the posterior cusp of the bicuspid vein and the other which lies behind it that is anterior cusp because we are looking at it from posterior side or and then this cusps anterior cusp and posterior cusps these are being attached by the cordate tendony to the anterior papillary muscle and posterior papillary muscles so that and it's unidirectional so that when when this left atrium contracts it pushes the blood through this orifice into the left ventricle but when the left vertical contracts the two flaps come close to one another and closes the mitral orifice or mitral vein and do not allow the blood to regurgitate from the left ventricle to the left atrium if due to some reason for example you can say that of rheumatic fever or any other choroiditis or endocarditis if this will become weak and then what will happen during ventricular contraction the flaps do not close completely and the blood will come back to the left atrium and that will produce a gushing sound which we call it as the the murmur and that is that is and the condition is called as mitral regurgitation and uh, in the same way in some conditions the mitral valve may get stenosed if it is stenosed then when the right the left atrial contract the blood will pass into the left ventricle but again with the force and it will produce the murmur that we call it as mitral stenosis okay this is about the mitral valve and then you look that from the left atrium this smooth area which leads look to the ascending aorta this is the outflow tract which is smooth where the inflow tract which is being made rough by trabecular cornea and when the left ventricle contract the blood passes upward into the ascending aorta and note over here the ascending aorta the opening of ascending aorta it is being also being guarded by three valves look the opening of the ascending aorta it is also being guarded by three semilunar cusp like this look if this is the opening one cusp fly over here and one cusp fly over here and one cusp fly like that you can see three cusp three semilunar cusps and these three semilunar cusps they are being called these three semilunar cusps they are being called you can see over here these are called as anterior they are being called as 
the opening of the aortic opening like that of the coronary sinus it is being guarded by three semilunar cusps you can see one is called the left cusp and one is called as the right cusp and the other is posterior it's like this it we have opened it and then made it flap otherwise it's like this and it is called as right anterior and left anterior and one posterior from this cusp over here originate the right and left coronary artery that's why this right anterior and left anterior they are also called as right coronary sinus and left coronary sinus as well when the posterior one is also called as non coronary sinus and then you can see that the free edge of this cusp in the center is having this nodule which is called as which is called as nodule while the free edge on each side of the nodule that is thin it is called as low nodule and then what happens that when the left ventricle contracts the blood is being pushed upward into the aorta but when the left ventricle goes into diastole and blood come want to break into the left ventricle what happens these cusps are being filled with blood and when this get filled with blood they come close to one another and unite edge to edge like this you can see over here the three cusps are now lying edge to edge and it do not allow the blood from the aorta to come back into the left vertical okay and it is at the same time when these cusps are being full of blood the coronary arteries at the same time receives then the blood from these three for these two cusps which are the right and left coronary cusps okay this is all about the mitral valve and tricuspid valve and i have also discussed it in the form of the the tricuspid the right side and on the left side the bicuspid valve and on the right side the pulmonary the orifice and the left side the aortic orifice i hope you would be clear about that okay thank you very much